my name is Rio and welcome to another match day vlog. Today Chester FC entertains Southport at home where we look to start off the new decade with a bang. So first of all, Happy New Year to you all. I all ho I hope you all had a great night last night, but it is back to the drawing board today, footballing wise. So of course I do expect Southport to approach today's game in a different manner than they did last week because obviously Southport will be hoping that they don't be on the wrong end of another hammering defeat for them. So we do need to play even better today in my opinion because we underperformed on Saturday at home against the Kurs and Ashton. So we need a big reaction and so do Southport. So in my opinion, I think whoever starts off the quickest will win the game today. So hopefully it's will be us so of course i do hope you enjoyed today's video if so please like subscribe and comment down your thoughts of the game below so let's get into today's video right now enjoy We are going to be in for a difficult game today because in recent weeks at home against the lower side such as AFC Telford United and most notably Kurs Nation on the weekend we underperformed massively so of course with Southport being a lot better than those sides in the playoff places it is going to be a lot more difficult today so we do need to start off on the front foot and I know Bern Bern and John they will definitely want a reaction today in front of another healthy home crowd so we do need to deliver and in midfield and in the final third as well we do need that cutting edge today because that needs to return like it did on Thursday so our last match was on Saturday as we succumbed to a disappointing 1-0 home defeat against Kurs National and what was a really poor match for us so I thought to be fair the first half was actually all right by us we were the better team in possession but there were some periods where we were quite lazy and a bit you know uh, action list really we had a lot of the ball but in some periods we just uh, like England like they used to play just pass it back and forth so we didn't really have that spark but after just about 20 minutes we nearly made it to 1-0 as Elton the Gratala scored it is a last goal for us but it was a good finish to be fair as he smashed the ball right down the middle but it was ruled out for offside and before half time Curzon had a few chances they knocked on the door as Russ Griffiths was called into action as he, as he did really well to tip a shot around the post however the second half was so poor by us we were lacklustre inept and it was just we just had no plan b and the substitutions we made they were just about 20 minutes after the after the curves and goal and we brought on two defenders when we were 1-0 down you don't do that at all they don't often criticize bernard's Jono, but i think they did some have some elements where they got it wrong after the weekend so we do need to be a bit more you know a bit more uh, conscious of our uh, decision making today in my opinion so just four minutes into the second half Kurz and Ashton made it 1-0 as former Chester player Andy Hall scored the header at the back post so Russ did get a save to it he got a hand to it but it wasn't enough and also a few moments later former Chester player Sean Miller hit the post for Kurz and Ashton and former Wigan Athletic man Mike Calverley did score the rebounds but thankfully for us it was disallowed for offside. We did have a good few chances before full time but still the second half was just terrible by us and today we need to do loads more. <laughs> Southport will be making the journey from Lancashire having had a really good season so far as they have spent the majority of it in the playoff places so the Sandgrounders will be hoping to get promoted back to the National League for the first time since 2017. Hopefully we will be joining them if so. So there will be two former Chester FC Blues up against us today at the 1885 Arena, both in separate roles. So on the playing side of things, centre-back Ryan Assels used to play for us between 2016 and 2018, so he did quite well for us. He was a solid defender, so he was uh, famous for that last gasp injury time equaliser at the Tramia Rovers back in 2017 when it was that fantastic two-all away draw. We came from two goals down and what a fantastic uh, local away day it was. We took well over 1,000 supporters there, so what a superb away day. So 
Ryan did leave us in 2018 in the summer because his uh, future at us was uncertain as we didn't have a single manager at the time. So that was before Bernard's general came. He left to join Southport and he has been at Southport ever since. Meanwhile, on the coaching side of things, John McCarvey is Southport's assistant manager to Liam Watson and he was here in two separate roles between 2014 and 2017. So John started off way back in 2014 to 2016 as Steve Burr's assistant manager. But once Steve Burr got sacked at the back end of the 2015-16 to season, John was appointed as our caretaker manager for four matches and fair play to him, he did win three of those matches so he did guide us to safety as we were in a relegation battle. So John McCarvey was appointed as our permanent manager between 2016 and 2017. Uh, but the 2017-18 to season started off in terrible fashion so John was sacked just a month into the new season just hours after we lost against Solihull Moors away on the Tuesday night so John has since been at Southport as their assistant manager between 2017 up until, up until now so it will be rather interesting to see what uh, sort of reception he will get today. <laughs> We have locked horns with Southport a whopping 15 times before, so our last match against Southport was last Thursday on Boxing Day, so on December the 26th, 2019 to be precise, and that was an exceptional 3-1 away win for us, so what a fantastic away day it was. We took a great following, we were singing throughout the entire second half, and to top it all off, Gary Roberts scored a scream from about 25 yards out, he nearly ripped the net off, so what a superb goal. You can watch all four of the goals in my matchday preview, which I did post out yesterday. So what a great away day. So hopefully we can record another win against Southport and get our first double of the season. This mountain I must climb. My score prediction for today's match is... Chester FC 2, Southport and also for the Blues. I think Simon Grant and Aquasi Asante will score for us today. So I think we'll get another win against Southport because at the end of the day, I do think our two managers will want a massive reaction. So will Southport, but we do have home advantage and surely, uh, you know, if the law of averages goes this way, you know, if you can beat Southport away, then surely we can beat them. So obviously it doesn't work that way, but we'll be hoping it does today. So I think it will be a routine performance by us today and hopefully we can start off the new year in the best possible way. As usual, I will be attending today's match, so stay tuned for my match day vlog, which will be coming up right now. So, of course, it's another massive game for us today. Can't wait, so, of course, I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If so, please like, subscribe, and comment down your thoughts of the game below. So, come on, City, let's do this. The clouds, I see no shine. It keeps me warm as life grows cold. I've just arrived at the 1885 arena ready for today's match so we do need a big reaction today the weather is really nice out here it is nice and mild as well and also the pitch is in great condition so hopefully play some nice expansive football today so it is a big game uh, hopefully you know see a stronger team today just like Saturday but we need to deliver now in the final third and of course in this field where we, where we have lacked that end product so it is a big game for us today Come your blues. Is it again? Can't stop now. I've traveled so far to change this lonely life. I wanna know what love is. I want you to show me. I wanna feel what love is.
Here is your Chess FC squads for today's match. We are in a 4-3-3 formation, so in goal is number one, Russ Griffiths. In defence is two, Kevin Roberts, five, James Jones, six, Simon Grant and three, Matty Waters. In midfield is seven, Braz Jackson, four, Captain Gary Roberts and eight, Gary, Gary Stopforth. And up front is 10 Matthew Hughes, 9 Aquasi Asante and 11 Anthony Dudley. On the substitutes bench is 12 Jamie Morgan, 14 Alton Guatala, 15 George Waring, 16 Danny Elliott and 17 Joel Taylor. And here is your Southport squad for today's match. Enjoy the vlog. Come on City! Asante hits it. Oh, lucky. A chance by Asante was saved. Southport have just missed the city to make it 1-0. Uh, their strike was about five yards out, but somehow he blazed over. Bit of a let off for us. Well, Grant hit it! Oh no, unlucky by Brad Jackson. He did really well to skin the defence, but bit of a, yeah, bit of a chain shot for an easy save out of Albinson. We are now halfway through the first half here at the 1885 Arena and it's still goalless. So I think the first half has been quite good so far. I think it's been a decent game. It's been quite even, but we have been quite good to be fair. So we have had a few chances. Uh, of course, the Atlantic first of all has one near the edge of the area and Charlie Albinson eventually gathered the ball up and another one by him went wide. And a few moments ago as well, a chance by Matthew Hughes missed the target too. Uh, Southport, they've been a bit dangerous in some periods. Uh, they've had a few attacks as well. And, oh, go on, hit it! Oh, unlucky! Unlucky by a quasi Dante. About 20 yards south and the chance blazed by Swan City. Yeah, so Southport had a great chance to make it 1-0. About 6 yards south but somehow they blazed it over. So come on you Blues. Hopefully get a goal before the break. Go on, Matty, go on! Oh! Went in for a second. A chance by Matty Hughes went wide, but we do at the corner. Matty Waters is going to take it on the right hand side, so we have about 10 minutes before the break. So he's about to get ready now. It's gone in by Waters. Oh, go on now! Yes! Yes! Chester! 
Manchester FC 1, Southport 0. So the corner went in by Matty Waters. Charlie Arbison punched it towards the other end of the goal, but Simon Grant scored a good head out the back post for 1 0. <laughs> Half time, Chester FC 1, Southport 0. I think it has been quite a decent half by us so far. So Simon Grant made it to 1 0 to us with about 10 minutes before half time. It was a good header by him, the corner went in and he headed home at the back post. A bit of a similar goal to the one Andy Hall scored the other day. So the first half has been quite good by us and had a few good chances too. So got a big second half now to come on. With just moments since the half, but we already have a corner, so Matty Waters is going to take it. Go on, Matty, hopefully, get, uh, get off to a good start. Go on now! Oh, go on now! Oh, Charlie Albinson punched it away. Go on, Dutch, hit it! Go on, Hughes! Oh, go on! Southport 0, great score by Aquasi Asante. Charlie Albertson did really well to save the initial shots, but he did parry it out to Asante, who tapped it at the back post for 2 0. Go on, Grato! Go on! Go on, Simpson! Call the ball here! Come on, Simpson! Come on, Simpson! Come on, Simpson! Grath Jackson crossed it in and Ryan has to it out for a corner. So it's gone in by Matty Walters, short to Brad uh, Jackson. Go on! Oh! Go on! It's Go on it! Hit it! Oh! oh. Come on, Look City! Come on, now! Come on, City! Aquatia Sanchez had a chance, but Southport kick it over. So it's gone in by Walters, oh, and Southport gets it out. Sante! Oh, unlucky! Come on, Blue! Come on, Sante! Go for third! Oh! Go on, City! Unlucky by Sante again! He did really well to Sante! Oh, Quasi Sante! Quasi Sante! Quasi Sante! He did really well to ground Charlie Alvinson, his shot was saved to a corner kick. So the ball's gone in by Matty Waters and Ryan Assel sets it out. Come on! Come on, Kevin! Come on! Bravo! Just dragged it out. Oh, unlucky. Just went in by Kev Roberts, but Southport's clear it. Go on, Dodd! Southport clear it out, but Dudley struck the ball on the volley, right past Charlie Alvinson. Oh, come on! Square it now! 
complete back. Oh, it's going to Oh! Absolutely nothing, nearly got another 10. Side netting. Second half has been superb. Shoot! Oh! Hey! Bloody hell, so Charlie Albertson made a bit of a mess of that one because Anthony Dudley had another chance for us, but he saved it with his legs. It nearly went in. We have another corner on this left hand side, so Matty Waters taking it short to Jacko. Go on. Oh, trying to get the crossing, but Southport blocks. But we have it back. Go on. Asante, go on, turn! Yeah! Yeah! Too easy! Too easy! FC4, Southport nil. Aquasi Asante once again got a second of the game. I tell you what, the second half has been too easy. Southport has been terrible, so Aquasi Asante did really well to find the uh, left hand corner to make it 4 0. What a match! We are now halfway through the second half here at the 1885 Arena. 4 0. 4 0 to Chester. We haven't even played half an hour yet in the second half. What a superb performance it's been today against Southport. So we do proclaim as one of our bogey teams. So just a few minutes into the half, Aguardi Asante made it 2 0 to us. A nice finish by him because Charlie Albinson carried in. Well played! Well played, Robbo! Gary Roberts being taken off here. Roberts, well played, Gary. So, yeah. Elton Lucasal is coming on for Gary Roberts, but second half though has been so good. So the first goal came by Asante. Charlie Albinson parried it out and Asante tapped in at the back post. The second, uh, the second goal then came by Anthony Dudley to make it 3-0 to us. A sensational goal. He volleyed it into the back of the net from about 20 yards out. And a few moments ago, a quasi Asante made it 4-0. It was a good goal once again, he just smashed it into the far corner. So what a second half performance. Hopefully keep it going now. Come on you blues. <laughs> Former Blue Ryan Assis has just headed over for a corner, so it's going in on the right hand side by Matty Waters. Hopefully, get a fifth. Go on! Oh! Off the line! Go on now, Asante again! Oh! Go on! No! Oh! We had two good chances which were headed off the line. I think it was Aquasi Asante and Southport headed away, nearly 5 0. has been held back so we have a free kick for about 20 yards out so Matty Waters is going to take it another one like Leamington will be nice oh a tuck at the flex and then we have a corner so the corner is once again going to be taken by Matty Waters who is the man of the match oh come on Santa oh come on come on shoot dots oh well, we had a couple of chances then. Asante had a chance which was blocked, and once again, Dudt had another good chance too.
full time. Chester FC 4, Southport's nil. So a scintillating second half performance does mean that the Blues are back to winning ways in some styles. So it is a very happy new year for Chester FC. What a performance today. And we have completed our first double of the season against the uh, poor Southport team. So what a fantastic 4 0 win today. More reactions shortly. FC4, Southport nil. So we have well and truly put our recent disappointments on its head today, and this is a very happy new year for us. Chess FC supporters, it was a sensational win for us today. We did need a reaction, and we got one once again to complete our first double of the new season against one of our so called bogey teams. So, what a sensational win for us today! So, fair play to every single player out there today who played a massive role in a massive win for Chess FC, which does see us now go back above uh, Brackley Town because they drew against Kettering Town today because Brackley actually missed a late penalties so thankfully it's a bit of a lifeline for us but we'll take it nonetheless so yes fair play to the Blues today for everyone did really well today and in the end you know it did turn into a massive result because our style of play was so much better today against the likes of AFC Telford United and, and of course Curtis Nashton a few days ago we were very slow on the ball but today we were so much more expansive we used the length of the pitch really well today and the width of it so much because the likes of Matty Hughes and Brad Jackson both did really well on their returns in a Chester FC shirt today so they played some massive roles now win today and also our style of play was much more quicker too and also for once we actually took our chances because surprisingly uh, believe it or not in recent weeks against the likes of Darlington away hence for Town away AFC Town for the United at home and also Curse National on Saturday uh, we didn't even score a single goal in, in, in those four matches, but today we scored four in, in, in 90 minutes, so it did work out really well for us today. So Southports were quite a dire side today, and they were very disappointing uh, once again, and it does cap off a miserable week for them because they lost 3-1 at home against Tulsa the other day, they lost 3-0 away on Saturday at Altrincham, and they lost 4-0 away uh, today at Chester FC, so what a terrible seven days for Southports, and they are now sick from the table so things aren't looking great for them once again but to be fair they still are one of the best sides in the league I know they aren't doing too well at the moment but we made them look really poor once again today uh, so Southport in the first half they did make a uh, you know they had a few dangerous moments and Jack Sampson was quite lively up front as well he made a few you know tasty tackles so Southport did make things uh, quite tough for us in the first half but once Simon Grants did make it 1-0 to us Southport fell down uh, just like George Waring scored last week they fell down like a uh, pile of dominoes and they never got to going once again and also we do have to give a lot of praise to our two managers today because uh, they got their approach spot on today uh, you know they weren't afraid to ring the changes in they made about five changes today and uh, you know in particular for Matty Waters, Matty Hughes, Brad Jackson and of course Anthony Dudley all did so well for us today they all played some pivotal crucial roles and have a fantastic win and fair play to Bernard and John because they got things spot on today and I'm sure they'll be thrilled with how things went on today so what's a uh, sensational win and we're well, well and truly back in the mix. Compared to a few people on the for chats who did say that the first half was quite poor, I am going to stick my head above the parapet and I'm going to disagree with, with a few people because I thought the first half wasn't too bad in my opinion. I thought it was quite even because it was quite a cagey game in some periods. Uh, Southport did make a few tasty tackles and the, ref, uh, the referee did, uh, should have uh, got his card out on a few occasions. But I thought the first half wasn't too bad. But there were, you know, there were still a few uh, 
elements of a lack of urgency in some in some stages by us. We, we were still a bit slow on the ball, but in possession, I thought we were a lot more efficient in some stages, and especially the additions of Brad Jackson and Tomasi Hughes did enable us to you know, get out further wide, and also they did enable us to uh, go near Southport's penalty area on a lot more occasions as well. So again, that's another good reason why Bernard John have, you know put those two in the team today. So the first half wasn't too bad by us. Southport's were quite dangerous on a few occasions going forward. And there were a few gaps in defence, but still we were quite composed. So the first chance of the game went after just about 10 minutes for us. For the man of the moment, Aquasi Asante, and he was warming himself up for his eventual two goals. Has a chance from about 20 yards out for a save out of Charlie Albinson. So I thought Charlie Albinson was quite a uh, dodgy keeper for Southport today. I'd say for at least two of our goals, he made a few poor mistakes. And for Asante's shot, he did actually parry the initial ball outs but fair play to him did actually recover to save the uh, shot after that and a few moments later Asante was involved once again for us as header by him went across the face of the goal so nearly made it 1-0 for us. Chances did die off a little bit since then but at the other end Southport's missed an absolute sitter and it was Morgan Homson smith is it? Uh, from about five yards south and he should have easily buried the ball away but somehow he skied it over it was a terrible miss for uh, Southport and if he had scored then the game could have gone the other way but thankfully it was a blessing in disguise for us after that we had a few further chances as a chance by another chance by Aquasi Asante was saved by Charlie Albinson and Brad Jackson did really well to skin a few Southport defenders and the tame hit by him was straight at Albinson on the 34th minute mark though a chance by Matty Hughes was deflected out for a corner and again another blessing in disguise for us because the resulting corner went in by Matty Waters. Once again Charlie Albinson did make a bit of a mistake as he flapped at the ball. He was supposed to punch it out and did actually watch a video of the goal on D for chat a few hours ago and he did uh, call his name but he, he was supposed to punch it all the way out of the uh, penalty area but he actually punched it to the right of him and Simon Grant was lurking at the back post and he easily scored a header to make it 1 0 to us. So, a bit of a similar goal to the one Andy Hall scored a few days ago, but still a great way to end the first half for us. So, the first half was decent by us, and once we scored that goal, we were by far the better team. So, a decent half by us. Meanwhile, the second half was so much better by us to just sum it up into one word. It was formidable because we did really turn on the style to rip Southport apart. And also it did remind me of the good old days of early on this season where we tore apart the likes of Hereford FC, Gloucester City and also Geisley at home and even Kurz Nashton and AFC Telford United away. So it felt like the good old days and also one thing we have lacked in recent weeks is our lack of ambition in the final third but today we scored three goals in a matter of 45 minutes to confirm a fantastic day at the office so it only took just two minutes into the second half to double our advantage as Aquasi Asante got his first of the game to make it 2-0 to us so once again I do think it was again another bit of an error by Charlie Albinson because he did parry out the initial, uh, the initial shots by Matty Hughes out and all Asante had to do was tap the rebounding at the back post to make it 2-0 to us so a sensational start to the second half and it effectively confirmed the win really because Southport didn't even offer anything in the second half to just invite loads of pressure <coughs> <clears throat> uh, so what a sensational performance by us and also Aquasi Asante after that was still having none of it as he had the further three chances to extend our scoreline and really in the entire game we could have won by about seven or eight scores just like last Thursday so again Aquasi Asante is still a chance blocked over by Southport's defender for a corner and another chance by him went into the side netting and also uh, he had to force a save out of Charlie Albinson again because a chance by him was straight at Southport's custodian. However, Chester FC made it 3-0 and this time it was Anthony Dudley. It was, sublime, it was a sublime goal, a sensational volley from about uh, on the edge of the area, so about 18 yards south. He hit it first time into the back of the net and it was a uh, perfect volley to uh, cap off a fantastic afternoon for us. So we cannot wait to see that goal back tomorrow night on the highlights reel. So uh, another great goal to make it 3-0 to us. The chances kept on coming and coming and coming.
coming for yours and Burath Jackson was so unlucky to not have made it 4-0 as the powerful shots by him actually hit the post so that would have been again another immense goal to make it 4-0 and also Anthony Dudley had another good chance to extend our scoreline as the powerful shots by him went into the side netting. However, finally after just about uh, 60 odd minutes, Southport actually had their first chance of the half but it was a half chance really at a uh, tame header by Zen Mohammed Force an easy save out of Russ Griffiths. So quite a poor chance by Southport to uh, you know just sum up, a, sum up a miserable afternoon for them. Also we had another good chance as a chance by Brad Jackson went over and again a chance by Anthony Dudley forced a rather odd save out of Charlie Albinson. He actually saved the shots with his two legs so it could have easily trickled underneath but it was a, again another unfortunate chance for Dudley to get his second of the game. On the 71st minute mark though, Akwasi Asante confirmed a sensational afternoon for us as he made it 4-0 to us, so again another great goal by him. He did really well to turn away with the ball and he just sm uh, smashed it into the far left-hand corner to again uh, sum, up, uh, sum up a uh, fantastic performance by us. So once again, the big man inland amongst the goals and he did actually record his 17th goal of the season today which is phenomenal for this time of the year, so another great finish by Akwasi. Meanwhile, Southport's had their final and second chance of the game as again another terrible miss, this time by Jack Sampson summed up a terrible day for them so really Southport's missed two absolute towers in the entire game because of course the Morgan Homson Smith one in the first half went over from about five yards out and in similar fashion in the second half, Jack Sampson missed an absolute sitter again from about ten yards out, again another chance by him sailed over so yes Southport Southport's were lacklustre today, bits like us on Saturday against Curse and Ashton. Time was ticking for Southport to get a consolation and just before full time we had a further chance to get another goal as a header by Simon Grant got cleared off the line from a Matty Waters corner and Duds fired a chance over again but still a sensational performance by us today. Every single play did really well for us and we saw out the game to record an emphatic win. Once again, my man of the match call for today is a tough one to make, so uh, just like last Saturday it was a tough one, but Saturday was of course for the wrong reasons, but today it's for, it is for the right reasons, so it is a difficult one, so... I think I'll go for Anthony Dudley, who was superb today in his favourite position, uh, right in the middle of the play. It's really well, you know, floating inside and outside as well, uh, drifting in and out. And his link up play was superb to watch too, uh, because in some periods so far this season, he has been quite uh, frustrating to watch because he doesn't really score too many goals for us. But on his day, he, you know, he can play superbly. And today was one of those days because Anthony was so good today. His link up play with a quasi Sand and Matty Hughes and some of our midfielders uh, too was a joy to watch and also how could you forget his sensational volley to make it 3-0 to us on the, on the edge of the penalty area right into the back of the net Charlie Albinson has no chance at all so I thought Dodds had a sensational performance for us today also, I think Matty Waters had an exceptional performance today because he doesn't, really too, uh, he doesn't really play too many matches for us, but because Joel Taylor was, I think Joel Taylor was injured today, Matty Waters did set up to, uh, step up to the fold so well today. And of course, as you all may know, Joel Taylor is one of our best players, but Matty Waters, you know, he's just as good in my opinion because I think he is one of our most improved players because in recent years, you know, he has uh, been in and out of our squads, but this season he stepped up to the plate so well whenever Joel has been out. And once again today on the left-hand side, he was so good. He had Southport's forwards in his back pocket and he was so good. His, uh, you know, his pace going up and uh, down, his tracking back, he made some superb tackles too and of course he uh, did get the assist for Simon Grant's header to make it 1-0 so fair play to Matty Walls as he did so well today and also I think Aquasia Santi once again today he did so well he was back to his best and this, uh, he you know does come at a close third because he scored two really good goals today to get back on the score sheet and again he held up the ball so well he made some good chances too and and he got into some good positions too and also a thoughts defensively we were quite resolute today because we have kept another clean sheet today which is vital for Russ Griffiths and his uh, four defenders and in recent weeks we have done so well defensively against the likes of Runcorn Town, Alfredton Town, Hensford Town 
AFC title for the United and of course Southport today we have kept a handful of clean sheets and today we kept another one too so I thought our defenders did so well today they won uh, nearly every single header as well and they didn't really even let Southport have a single sniff. In midfield once again today both of the Garys, Gary stopped fourth and of course Guy Roberts dictated the entire play, they passed Southport to death and Southport again in midfield they were lacklustre too so again our two uh, centre midfielders did so well today and finally I thought uh, Brad Jackson did really well today once again he was back in the team because he did miss Saturday's match due to illness but again his pace on the, uh, his pace on the uh, right hand side was so good to watch once again today so you know from 1 to 11 every single chess that he played did so well today and hopefully will be just as good on Saturday <laughs> Our next match is on Saturday as we play Geisley away. So this will actually be quite a tough game as we would have expected because in the last seven days Geisley have actually won three matches over the uh, Christmas and New Year period. So they've beat Farsley Celtic twice and also York City away from home which was a shock result at the weekend. So Southport have beat two really good promotion chasing sides. So it is going to be a difficult game for us and also I'm sick of going to Geisley now. It's my fifth visit to Nevermore Park and you've got to admit it is quite a really dire ground but uh, yeah gonna go to there once again on Saturday for my fifth visit so yeah the ground is quite bad but hopefully we can get a good result there and uh, at least a draw hopefully and hopefully we can put on yet another good performance. <laughs> As ever, I will be going to Geisley, so look out for my match day preview, which will be out on Friday. And as ever, on Saturday, I will do a vlog of the game as well. So I am sure you enjoyed today's match day vlog. A fantastic win for the Blues, and again, another great performance. If so, please like, subscribe, and comment down your thoughts of the game below. See you at Nevermore Park on Saturday in Yorkshire. Should be a cracking game. Two promotions hating sides. See you there. What a win. Come on, you Blues. Get I wanna feel what I need.